I realized I make a lot of pew pew sound effects with my mouth uh, during this video, so I apologize in advance. What's up, Airsofters? Uh, so today I'm doing the 2024 collection review of everything I've accumulated so far, thus far, in the world of Airsoft. And each gun has its own little story to it, I'm going to talk about it. As the years go on, I am going to accumulate more to the collection, and I plan on doing a video like this every year, where I take each gun or go through the whole collection and showcase like what I've got and what what I have going on. I got two more guns coming in for this year, but they're 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 not here yet, so those will be on next year's video. Obviously, I'll still have reviews on them when they come in when I get around to doing the airsoft review videos. We got uh Swamps we got Swamp Sniper running in the background. That's always fun. Just like a little little backdrop to keep everything fresh and interesting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with uh, the guns that work because not all of these are in full operational. Most of them are. I think there's like two. Yeah, there's two that aren't up through three, four. Four that aren't operational. And I'm going to talk about the ones that aren't operational. I'm going to talk about what I plan on doing with them, how I plan on upgrading them, the parts I'm going to get, and the story behind the empty shell that sits there because there, there are some stories to each gun. So I think I'm going to rotate with starting with uh, a gun that works and then moving forward to one of the empty shells and kind of alternate until I'm out of the empty shell guns. And now time to penetrate my arsenal. <clears throat> my, I mean, gander my arsenal. <clears throat> Look at ye arrow stuff. <clears throat> airsoft guns. We're looking at airsoft guns. Airsoft guns. Penetrate my arsenal. They say Fort Knox is the most impenetrable fortress that exists today. But I'm about to show you an even more impenetrable fortress because you have to get through me. <laughs> Alright, let's get into it. So this is where I store all of my gear. Right. I bought this shelf on Amazon. It's a nice little shelf. You could get them in all different sizes, like one of those little mesh wire shelves or whatever. So I don't have a gun rack. I just kind of keep the airsoft rifles propped up right here. I have this shelf here where it holds some of the, the bigger boys. Whole bunch of miscellaneous equipment. We got the, we got gun cleaning supplies, you know, miscellaneous parts and pieces and tools, you know, in case I ever need anything extra or stuff to swap around. I have a ton of like loose parts everywhere. It's also where I uh, store my armaments. You'd be an airsofter, you airsofter, get a real gun, get a real gun. I got the real thing. First shelf is where I keep my plate carrier. It's my airsoft pistols, when we get into it in a minute. It's basically cosplaying as my end of the world bunker. <laughs> All the airsoft drip and bags held up on the upper shelves. So yeah, this is where I store everything. This is the entire airsoft collection as it currently stands in 2024. Uh, as we get into it, you're gonna notice that I don't have anything too much on the higher end. Not that I don't want any, like, higher end airsoft guns that have super performance or anything. It's just I'm so obsessed with the, uh, the replica aspect of airsoft that I plan on buying, like, like, good, like, $200 versions of every gun I want to own IRL or all of my favorite guns in the form of airsoft just to build out like a cool little 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 collection and then once I hit that and I get every type of firearm in airsoft that I want then I'll segue into putting money into one really good high performance build for the field because you with Airsoft, what you'll come to learn is that you only actually need one good gun. What's fun about each and every one of these guns is they all have a nice little gimmick that I love or a story to go with them. And as we get into it and I show you each gun individually, I'll tell the story associated with that gun. I'm going to have a review for each of these guns once I get that little GoPro like I'm talking about. So that way you'll get like a full rundown. Some of these guns aren't in production anymore or aren't for sale anymore i can't really find them anywhere but you know you might have one laying around in the house or uh or you might have been holding on to one for a while now and you just wanted to like learn a little bit about it and how it performs i don't know this is the setup this is where all the magic happens pretty fancy we got the everything that's important we got the mountain dew <laughs> this is it 
So I guess we'll just get into the first gun then. Starting out with the collection, we got the Snow Wolf Aug, and this gun has a few surprises to it. It's a it's a low cost gun, but it's not you know uh, LPAG low powered electric rifle, yeah, or rifle gun low power low powered electric gun. Believe it or not, for $130, it might be more now, maybe like $140, $145, uh, maybe even $150. But when I bought it, it was $135 on evic.com. And this gun, as I stated in my last video where I talked about how I hooked up the camera, which you're seeing now, it's an eye grabber. Not too many people run around with augs. I bought it because it was, I figured it'd be good for CQB, you know, being a bullpup and all. I actually have an ex I actually have an extended barrel because the gearbox is back here. The gearbox is back here and the barrel runs all the way to like here. If you plan on picking up the Snow Wolf AUG, I do suggest buying a lower powered spring for our CQB because out of the box it shoots 410. 410. To get a $130 airsoft gun that shoots 410 FPS and can handle an 11-1 LiPo very very well this thing performs insane it's a sleeper i don't know if snow wolf is a newer company i'm not too delved into the company worlds or whatever but this gun is a sleeper and it fucking slaps i've never had problems with this i've been using it for about a year now and uh, it, look it, it's it's cool because we'll switch over to the other side the bolt the bolt locks back it does the thing some of the things i put on here i put on this optic with the riser mount to see over the peck box and I have it zeroed in and everything. Uh, this is for the pressure switch here. I keep it unplugged because, you know, I don't know, it's got got the little covers. So I put the, the, the pressure switch right here for, for, for the peck box. Yeah. It's decently bright. This is a, a cheap, you know, generic knockoff Amazon peck box. You know, none of these adjustment dials do anything. It's, it's mostly for the, the flashlight. Of it but it does have an IR laser which actually works so if you're ever running nods <laughs> it's not like the full beam fancy IR laser it's, it's just like wherever the dot goes uh, this little dial up here switches what mode it's in it's got laser and light you can see the laser glowing right there so if you wanted to do both for whatever reason the only problem is the the red dot on the laser you can't you can't adjust it so it's not going to be pinpoint accurate so that's the dual mode and then we got just the the regular laser mode pew, pew, pew. yeah airsoft ops better watch out overall this is the snow wolf og oh i have duct tape right here now this duct tape is here because i didn't uh when i broke it down took it, when i took the receiver apart when I took the upper off of the lower, and the this is where the little release is to get the receivers apart, and they just slide like that. It slides out when you pull it out and everything. Um, there's a little pin part in in the thing that I didn't know, so when I put it back together, I was like, "Why is this like just sliding back and forth?" Because it's ambidextrous, so it goes both ways on each side of the the receiver release. And when I put it back together, I'm like, why is this just sliding through? And it turns out there was a piece that goes there that I have no idea what happened to it. <laughs> uh, up here we have the, the tracer unit. I have a mock suppressor and I throw a tracer unit in there and I got the suppressor wrap because I thought it would look cool with the overall build of it. It has the actual AUG trigger. If you pull it half, semi, but if you pull the trigger farther, if you pull the trigger farther, full auto. This thing is sweet, and this is one of my mains right now just because of how well it performs. And for the price, you can't really beat it. It's crazy. Hence why I always call it the sleeper. Not only is it cheap and effective and performs well, but it, it's also quiet. So, sleeper, nighty night, everyone. It is a bit heavy, and the one thing I don't like about this gun, this uh, material, it's not polymer and that's what the downfall of this thing is it, it's a plastic you can see the seam right here where it splits not polymer there's no weight in the grip so the grip's kind of there but it, that's okay because the gun's already decently heavy that's the other conduit is it's heavy 
It's very heavy, very heavy airsoft gun. It's, it's a plastic, which is probably why it's at the price point. But for the performance, I'm fine with dealing with the plastic for 130 bucks. If you had the same performance in polymer, it'd probably be like a 250 $300 gun. Yeah! Look at that! Look at that! Look at this air, aerosoft gun. It's one of them genuine aerosoft guns. This is an old G&G combat machine. Like, you can tell it's got the old style little riser thingy there. This gun was amazing. It was fantastic when my friend Leon had it originally. Uh, unfortunately, because it's old and age, when I went to plug an 11-1 into it, I don't know if it couldn't handle the 11-1 or if the wiring was just that old, but it started smoking and it burst into flames. It's all metal, which I really like. And what I'm going to do is, originally I wanted to HPA it at the field I go to. MK Airsoft, go check them out. At the field I go to, it's super tight, close quarters, and it, you know, it's CQB style. I was thinking, like, like if the barrel ended here and was a 10-inch barrel instead of a 14-inch, it would be better for the HPA, and this thing would be a fucking beast to just be like... Pew, pew. But because the barrel is so long, I'm just going to put uh, an upgraded an upgraded gearbox with an upgraded motor and just run it as is. Especially because with tracer units, you add a tracer onto that. Even if you got like a tiny tracer, it still adds a little bit of barrel length. And I bump barrels all the time at MK Airsoft because of how tight it is and all my guns are super long. So yeah, this is the, the empty shell of a G&G combat machine. And it's it's crisp. I like it. I like the, the flat darker with the black barrel. It looks really cool with attachments. When I threw attachments on it before, it, it pooped on me. Very, very sweet gun. Shell. Ooh. This little thing, this gun has my brightest flashlight and it has a strobe mode with the pressure switch. This is a, a, a touch sole flashlight, you know, it, it's a $45 flashlight. It just is crisp, it's got the, the M lock. So, this gun, I took a gamble on. As we all know with Game Face, <laughs> uh, they're, they're budget guns. But they're not that good because you can get better budget guns for the price that aren't Game Face brand. <laughs> yeah, but this thing I took a gamble on. It was my Christmas gift from Ashley. This is what I wanted for Christmas because it, it was only $150 and I needed something short. This has the, the 10 inch barrel. It's nice and nice and CQB so I can move around MK Airsoft a lot better. I wouldn't recommend running an 11-1 through it because I ran an 11-1 through it. It did good. I've only played one game with this gun so far. It did good with the 11-1, but near the end of the day, it started having feeding issues where it was jamming up. And I don't know if that's because of the 11-1, if it like the internals are, are a little bit behind on it. So I would put a 9.6 in this one. It came with an 8.6 what's the 8.4? 8, 8, 8. When I threw the 11 one in it, it was it was shooting. The trigger is super snappy and the fire rate was actually really impressive. And for game face, this is an all polymer build. It is super nice. I kind of uh, styled it to be like the honey badger from Call of Duty Ghosts, even with the the little red dot I chose, the little cheap cheap red dot because you know it's airsoft everybody's like why don't you have a red dot cover it's like dude it's a 20 dollars red dot i'll just buy another one if it breaks it's got different settings different reticles which is really freaking cool not much else to say about this gun other than it performs way better than i expected and i took the gamble if you're looking to get into airsoft and are gonna go with game face i don't recommend going with game face for 150 dollars you could get the the snow wolf aug and the aug is much heavier but it performs better for 20 dollars less but if you're looking for an M4 style and you don't want to do the AUG, this is pretty good at $150, and it's su super lightweight. This gun is just ridiculously snappy on the field, and like I could just one-arm it. I even thought about dual wielding this with the AUG if the field was going to allow it. <laughs> Before we move on to the next gun, what I do want to talk about, though, is this tracer unit I have on it. This tracer unit, it does the... It's You can see... You can see it's got the little the little LEDs on the front, so it does the cool muzzle flash effect. And it's meant for a gel blaster, but it works just as well as airsoft. And I'll get the brand here, get the brand here in a second because this tracer unit 
blew me away. And my only complaint is it's a bit, it's thick. It's a thick boy. It's a thick boy tracer unit. Um, which is good for this gun, but I originally bought it for the AUG, and the AUG has like these little, like, little prongs that stick out past the barrel threads, so I couldn't get it on the AUG. What's funny though is the tracer in that mock suppressor is actually one of these. I bought two of these, and you could take them apart and slide the tracer out, and I put the tracer in the AUG, in the AUG mock suppressor, and it fit perfectly and it works perfectly. Game Face Ripcord M4. Every time I hear Ripcord, M4, I think of a Beyblade. <laughs> it's, it's, this is the Beyblade gun. I'm gonna try to do a 9.6 volt and see how that performs for a day, and this will also be one of my mains. I wouldn't make it my main now because I only have 11 ones, and I don't wanna destroy it before it's uh, before it's all good. Ripcord M4, it looks cool. It's a very cool looking gun, but for the price you can get a Snow Wolf AUG or probably other companies, or pay the extra 50 bucks and get a Lancer Tactical. So let's move on to a handgun here to take a little break from the rifles. This is my KJ Works Beretta, and this is unfortunately one of the broken airsoft guns. It's it's a very clean design. I used this in my uh, airsoft meme video. You can go check that one out right here if you want to. It's a fun video. Camera quality is crappy because I didn't think to hook up my icon. I used my crappy streaming webcam, which is really, really freaking bad. But I love Berettas, and what I did was, because this doesn't have a threaded barrel, I took paint stripper, and I stripped the paint off of it, and I was going to paint it black, but then I was like, you know what, I like the, the black on silver. I even bought silver mags for it, not knowing that it didn't work, because I didn't have work like mags that held gas. So I got extra Beretta mags waiting for a new Beretta. Uh, the reason this is broken is when I shoot it, it doesn't cycle back all the way. So you'll, you'll, you'll cock it back, right? There'll be a BB in the chamber, it'll shoot. The BB shoots just fine, the gas works just fine. But when the blowback action happens, it doesn't go back far enough to feed the next BB in. So it does technically work, but every time I shoot it, I'm gonna have to go. And at that point, why not just use a Springer? It's a shame, this is an older model KJ Works. I can't find this exact one anywhere anymore, so. Maybe I'll fix, maybe it needs a new piston system. I don't know a lot about the gas blowback internals of airsoft guns, but this is unfortunately one of my favorites that I don't get to use. Now we'll get into one that works, and this is a CO2 non-blowback Beretta, and it's whisper quiet, you know? It works really fucking well. That's all I can say for it. Uh, this one was actually a trash find. Essentially, uh, I'll get into the story of that with DAK, but it, it's a trash find and it works and I was impressed that it works So I was like, okay, cool. If I ever do want to run a Beretta, I'm gonna be at the field with, with this bad boy Coming straight from the dumpster is this awesome custom paint job Frankenstein AK Kalashkinov. As you can tell, it's got a custom paint job on it Really fucking cool. Uh, the selector switch on it is broken unfortunately but thank god it's locked in semi this thing is a fucking beast it shoots really 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 fast the reason it I caught the Frankenstein AK is because originally it had the full size the full length AK barrel the clash Kanov barrel that was also painted and it looks really cool all painted together like that so what I did was since it was a trash find, and I'll tell you how I trash found this Clash Kanov. I was at my cousin's, my cousin Jordan. My cousin Jordan's a fishing YouTuber. So if you're into like fishing content, you could find his channel here. I'll also link it in the description. Tightline TV. He he does it YouTube professionally, and his, his channel is really fucking cool. Um, but I was over for a family dinner event thing, and we were talking about Airsoft, and he was like, hey, I got a trash bag full of Airsoft guns in the basement. And, he was like, let me, let me, you could take them if you want. So he took me downstairs, he pulled out the trash bag, and this bad boy was in it, you know, with the, the full barrel. And the custom paint job is super fresh. I was like, wow, this one's really cool. And I didn't know if they all worked or not. Um, but the story was, he was working on a film project, and they needed prop guns for the film, the short film they were working on. And his friend had a bunch of airsoft guns, brought them over. That was four years ago. Kid never came back for the airsoft guns. And Jordan just gave them all to me. He's like, yeah, I don't care. He's not, he's not going to come back for them. So a uh, random guy out there 
who has this beautiful paint job, Kalashkinov. Thank you. You're not getting it back. I mean, if you didn't come back for them four years, I'm sure you, you don't really care. Hopefully. So, I Frankenstein on the, the Game Face 7-4-U barrel, which fits fine. I sawed off the, um, the little plastic part that, because it doesn't have, you can't, there's no way to expose the threads. It does have threads, which is wild. Why would you have the threads and no way to take, expose them? So, I actually sawed it off with the saw to get to the threads. I had the barrel ob off, obviously, so that way I could throw a tracer unit on this bad boy. This, uh, this little flashlight right here, it's a little, little guy. I don't have... A wiring route but I placed it on the left side of the gun so that way when I'm holding it I can just access the the flashlight like this so I'll be holding it you know we'll be running through the field if I need to use the flashlight I just click it on it's not as bright as the other lights but looking at it head-on on the camera it's not as good it has a strobe feature too in person when you're looking at it it's it's bright enough to not see where your target is so it's, it's good for that and I just took the top part of the uh, handguard off and took my my hillbilly camo duct tape and just duct taped the flashlight on there yeah it fucking works bro this i love this gun it's, it's a fun little little role play apocalypse gun fun little frankenstein gun for the field da come red good reload or something drink vodka eat borscht go home to wife clash canov way so that ak works and you're seeing this and you're thinking, wow, there's a lot going on with this thing. And this one works, kind of. This is the Falcon ASL. I bought this as my first main airsoft gun to use at the field at MK Airsoft. Uh, because this is what they use for the rentals. And I was like, well, if it works for the rentals and I don't know how big I'm going to be into this hobby. You know, and I put all the fancy fixings on it. I bought this big ass Amazon flashlight. That's actually really bright. This is my second. Jesus, blinding. This is my second brightest flashlight, and the camera is dimming it. It's like auto focusing and auto dimming it. But this is my second brightest flashlight. I put some different stock on, you know, for the tan and the, the ladder rail covers, and this grip, which actually came with my other gun, we'll get into later. But yeah, I figured it worked better on this one. And this was my, my main for a while. Right. Now, the reason I say this gun sort of works is I don't know what happened but uh now when it shoots the BBs just drop no matter how I adjust the hop up the BBs just come out the barrel and go not that shoot you could shoot like probably like a good 10 15 feet maybe before they go and just take a dive and it's really a tragic because I do like this way this gun works and this gun has gotten me through two years of airsoft and it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful little build, you know, really tragic. I really love it. I, you could tell I put a lot of aesthetic choices into the setup and the cable management and all that fun stuff. However, the other issue with it is, uh, when I went to put my tracers on it, the threads are actually messed up or not in the correct sizing. The threads right here, the threads got some wobble to them. It doesn't... Yeah, I don't know what's going on with the threads. To get it to work, I usually just wrap electrical tape around the threads and then twist it on with the electrical tape, and that'll hold the tracer on, and that's how I've been using the tracer with the gun for a while. R.I.P. the Falcon. Uh, I don't know what's wrong with it. I'm going to try to throw a new hop-up in it because I have, like, several different barrels, so I don't think it's the barrel because I've done it with all different barrels and it still just drops. So I'm going to try changing the hop-up in it. Uh, if that doesn't fix it, then we'll just throw in a nice little upgraded gearbox into it because it's a very cool rifle. All polymer, and I just love the flat dark earth on the black. Oh. In fact, it actually inspired my actual rifle build, which my rifle is incomplete, so you don't, don't laugh at me, but I'll show you guys anyways. This is my actual rifle, my uh, AR. This is the Bushmaster XM15. I don't know if this this handguard is aftermarket because when you know, I look at the Bushmaster ARs, they don't have the Picatinny handguard. And I was going for that classic like M4 style look to the point where I even on this side put like the the 
the fun little M4 handguard because you know I'm not gonna throw any attachments on this side. Uh, so yeah, it's not. It needs optics, obviously. I already checked if it was empty off camera. Needed a new buffer tube. I threw a new buffer tube. I shouldn't have got the flat dark earth mil spec buffer tube with the flat dark earth stock kind of messes with the whole aesthetic of it. So I might throw a, a black mag pull stock on or just keep this one on and change to a black buffer tube and use this buffer tube for another rifle. Um, but yeah, I like the mag pull handguard, mag pull everything. You know, full 16 inch barrel, you know, don't come after me, ATF. <laughs> what I'm waiting on is I'm trying to get an LPVO for it. I'm going to take this back iron off and throw on an LPVO for the range. So yeah, this is my, my actual AR. So, fun times. Back to the airsoft. This little fancy tracer unit. You shake, turn it on and off. The shake's not super sensitive, so unfortunately you got to take it off the gun every time you want to turn it on and off. Which sucks, because it would be cool if I could just put it on the gun and go... And then it turns on. This is a $30 tracer unit. It's got a nice little, like, it's all clear plastic. It flashes blue. It, it works. It's got a little carbon fiber. So if you're looking for a budget tracer unit, from what I've seen everywhere, this budget tracer unit is the best bang for your buck. If, especially if you don't care about aesthetics and you're just trying to see your BBs and the dark CQB fields. This one's your your main. And I'll, I'll show the little Amazon thing somewhere here in the video. This thing is sweet and is good for the money. My only complaint is the threads on it are plastic, so if you're not careful when threading it, you could fuck up the threads on the inside, and then that would render it useless unless you, like, fucking duct tape it or some shit. The T238 tracer unit for you, beautiful fuds. I'm gonna have to back up for this one. M for pain. This gun, ironically, is my fastest fire rate airsoft gun. It sucks because it's so beefy and long. You can't really use it at a CQB field. The FPS is low enough for a CQB field, but it just trying to turn your corners with this thing, you literally gotta be like, don't worry guys, I'm coming. Pew, 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 pew. But I love the M14. I love more modern M14s, which in my collection as it grows, I plan to get on more modern M14, but for the time being, this this is good. I actually don't know what brand it is, because this is another one of Leon's guns I bought off of him. Um, like, with the G&G &G combat machine. It does have a little screw mount, so you can put optics on it. The muzzle has, like, had, like, a little orange cap, and all you had to do was, like, and it came off. So, and it's, it's all, the barrel, the outer barrel is all steel. Fucking badass. The wood is faux wood. But it looks real enough, and it's pretty clean. Uh, my one complaint with this gun is that the top part is just like some crappy plastic. It looks poopy. Now, the reason I have this bandaging on it is, one, obviously, for grip. The reason I have not only for grip is this gun had a mock bolt release that worked. Worked real, and it would go, it would make the, the M14 noises. And it was so beautiful when it worked. Unfortunately when it worked is when Leon had it and when I bought the thing it still shoots and works as an airsoft rifle but the bolt didn't have all the parts some of the parts were missing so it would just kind of flop around like I could literally go like this and it would be like <laughs> so what I did was I put the bolt forward and wrapped with electrical tape and I was like that oh, looks good whatever but then I was like I don't like the way the electrical tape works I bought the gun wrap grippy things so it's a clean it's a clean fucking gun. a lot of people think it's an m1 garand whenever they see it especially when i come up to the field and it doesn't have the magazine in which i only have one m14 mag and unfortunately it's a yeah that's poopy i hate high caps but it's a fun gun it's a really fun gun m14 baby m14 so we're gonna get into this beautiful work in progress and this gun's got a story behind it. Nothing on it is the same. This is another Frankenstein body right now. The only original parts are the handguard, which is loose and wobbly, but whatever. Um, the carry handle on it. <laughs> and the full size stock, which I wrapped in the fancy little gun wrap because I thought it would look cool to make it look like a Army Rangers 
M16. This was the first airsoft gun that I ever witnessed to be more than just a toy. My friend Joey, we were really into airsoft and we would go into his backyard and play airsoft daily to the point where he fucking um, was like, you know what, I'm gonna show you guys up. So for his birthday, he got this. And the lower and upper receiver are not the original on the gun. I'm using a Black Ops branded receiver. It's good polymer, right? But the original receiver was the same kind of like gray style as the carry handle. That receiver had a crack in it, right? So back to the story. So none of us wanted to play against Joey because he had this badass thing and we didn't have any other airsoft guns over 100 FPS back in the day. Nobody wanted to play against Joey because of this thing. And like I said, this was the first like real airsoft gun any of us had ever witnessed. And it hurt. We didn't know airsoft could hurt that bad because we're used to playing with like 100, 150 FPS guns. This gun, I think, was 400 out of the box and we didn't know. And before we even knew there were ways to play airsoft, you know, because none of us, we were just kids in middle school, you know, just goofing around with each other. For one, we didn't wear eye protection. We played one hit, you're out, is what we called it, which is just regular airsoft, or hit till you quit and in hit till you quit it's exactly as it sounds it's you we would split up into teams and you would get shot up with airsoft bb's until you said uncle <laughs> we had some dangerous ass kids back in the day nobody ever wanted joey on the other team because of this bad boy right here and nobody ever wanted joey on the opposite team because that kid had the biggest pain tolerance out of any of us like there was a time where it was just me david and joey left so a 1v2 and we were playing hit till you quit joey would not fucking quit this motherfucker <laughs> david came up behind him and had him in a chokehold telling him to give up and he's coughing he's like <laughs> just like trying to like somehow turn the gun on date this long ass m16 on david to get him out he's just coughing and shit i run up and i'm like i'm like with my crappy like clear plastic gun like beep, 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 unloading on him and he just would not give up and we were i we were ch shooting the crap out of him and uh, D david kicked him in the balls and he still didn't give up we're like quit quit he's like no <laughs> Uh, eventually we uh, everybody just came to a consensus of like all right joey you, your team lost like just i'm sorry the, the we can't just keep going on like this so no needless to say when this thing was around back in fucking 2012 jesus christ 2011 nobody wanted joey on the opposite team and it was hilarious so this gun has a lot of memories to it he had a scope for it and everything and we called it the sniper because we didn't know what a dmr was and or a battle rifle and this is an M16 so we just pretended it was a, a sniper rifle despite knowing it's an M16. Um, so the original receiver body which was the only part of the gun that was plastic and still is the only part of the gun that's plastic um, cracked. Joey gave it to his little brother Ryan. Ryan cracked it and Ryan grew out of airsoft and Joey one day when he was home on leave from the Air Force because Joey's a tough son of a bitch and joined the military when Joey was on leave, he uh, was going through his, some of his stuff at his house, and he pulled it out, and he was like, you could have it. I was like, really? He was like, yeah, just take it, bro. Because, one, he doesn't have anybody to play airsoft, and he's stationed in Alaska, and I don't know if Alaska has airsoft fields. They got bears, though. <laughs> so, the state this gun originally was in was so bad, and you can kind of see it a little bit. It looks like... Yeah, you could see the barrel kind of sags downwards a bit. Uh, I don't know if that will affect the inner barrel. I'm hoping it doesn't because then I can still use it. And uh, the plan is to make this back into a high-powered gun for an outdoor field or milsim event one day. Um, but it is currently an empty shell, and I'm going to throw a gearbox in with the motor, and I'm gonna put my scope on it and everything. This is gonna be a dope ass Milson build. Can't wait to get this one up and running again because not only 
does it look cool, but it has a lot of sentimental memories associated with the gun and our childhood of the the friend group's childhood is in this airsoft gun. So it means a lot to me. It, it really does. Moving on to the next gun, which I could just actually reach over here and grab. Huh. Now this looks legit. I call this the meme rifle. This scope was the scope that was on Joey's M16, so I still got the, the scope he had for it and everything. Uh, it's variable, and it's pretty sweet. The reason I call it the meme rifle, it's a UK arms. And you airsofters know about UK arms. However, what's unique about this specific UK arms is it actually fucking slaps and is a good fucking Springer sniper. The one downside to the meme rifle is the, the bolt, it doesn't actually have a bolt. It has this stupid fucking charging handle. And that's how you cock it. I don't know why they decided to go that route. But it'll shoot, like, it'll shoot far. It, it uh, chronoed at 250 FPS, which isn't anything crazy. But for UK arms, I think 250 FPS is really good. And the fact that you can consistently put out 250 FPS with this thing and it travels far every time says a lot. I use two O's with this gun. I'm not using anything heavier because of it being a UK arms and a Springer and only 250 FPS. But I call it the meme rifle because it's perfect for, you know, nice little, nice little. It's, that's as fast as you can fire it. It's a UK arms. Nobody expects to get hit with it. But the one game I played with it so far, it fucking absolutely slayed. Uh, we were playing Domination, so I was just deciding... Or no, it was Bus Control. Bus Control. We were playing Bus Control, and it's basically like King of the Hill. Whoever has the most uh, amount of people in the bus wins the game at the end of the round. So there is this one sight line all the way back by the part of the field that's called the White House that you can see all the way down to where the bus is. And it's very open, and it's very good, so... I was like, fuck it, we'll use the meme rifle today. I was really hoping they would feel the hits because I was using two O's and it's only 250 and I'm shooting at a range, so. This thing will still hit, I want to say 100 feet. I don't know if that's realistic, if that makes sense, but I'll, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. I shot it to the other roof across from my apartment complex, and that's a pretty, at least 50 feet. And it, it it's a fucking, it's a laser beam. I don't know if UK Arms does like a one in every hundred guns actually works type of deal and they have some secret sleepers around. This thing fucking slaps and I can't find this exact UK Arms model anymore because it's very poppy. It's all plastic unfortunately but it, it, it works really well and I got the game I used it for bus control I got 10 kills with it which isn't a lot but you gotta think I'm, I'm playing as a sniper, so I'm like just kind of hiding in the shadows. I literally was in the back of the back of the field in the shadows just being like, psh, tango down. And because it has an orange tip, which UK Arms, it's not an actual like threaded flash hider. I just wrapped it with the, the, the gun wrap all the way up to the muzzle. And because of that, it, it has a quieter prop. Um, the stock is actually broken. The stock is held on by a combination of duct tape and then this this wrap on the edge because otherwise it's just it's just duct tape and that doesn't look pretty so I made it look pretty. The Picatinny is a plastic Picatinny but it still works with real optics as you can tell because this isn't this isn't like a this is an actual optic this isn't the cheap plastic circle tube that uh, UK Arms gives with it this is a real optic I put on there. Uh, but because it's plastic, it, it cracked right here and broke, so this actually isn't held on by anything. It's just sitting on a pile of electrical tape to keep it, you know, s stable, because if not, it bounces up and down. Um, but this holds the Picatinny down, because the Picatinny does kind of flop because it's plastic, so this holds it down, and then uh, after the game, the one game I played with it, this part started to come up, so I put the duct tape I had left over to hold it down, and then put that over the duct tape. Meme rifle! It fucking slaps. I put little little flip up front iron on it just for shits and giggles. My little uh, cable management clips on there just to give it a little more of a beefy look from the front of the the barrel. And 
nobody knows that this is cheap until I tell them it's cheap. Because from a distance, it just looks like a nice little spring-powered sniper rifle. And then I'm like, it's a UK arms, bro. And they're like, what? And I go, I call it the meme rifle for memes. I went through all of the broken guns. Um, this is a Glock. This is another KJ Works gas blowback Glock. And this one still works. This was my main secondary for a while. Just doesn't have a threaded barrel, so to get rid of the orange tip, I had to strip the paint and left the barrel silver because that looks cool. I did cover it in clear coat in case it would rust because I wasn't sure if it was going to rust. So it's covered in clear coat, so to prevent any rusting from happens. I just think it, it adds a little adds a little style and a little flair to it. I don't think I ever have a story with this one. It's just it's a, I do have a story with this one, but it goes with the other gun I'm going to get to. So I'll put that there for now. Now we move on to my current main. This is a SIG P226. This is an officially licensed SIG Sauer P226. I do have a, a flashlight for it that works and then to, to strobe it. Didn't work when I got it. And I brought it back to life. It's, this one actually has threads, but since I was like, you know what, I'm stripping the paint off the other barrels. Leon had some really cheap gold paint on it. I was like, I might as well get this cheap gold paint off. So I stripped the paint, covered the barrel in clear coat for that nice, nice silver silver look and uh the piston was dirty lo and behold after cleaning the piston and getting a magazine to fit a modern day magazine it works and this has been my main secondary ever since and just because i freaking love sigs i i love sigs that did, did i say i love sigs i love sigs and i would love to have a sig in real life probably the 320 but i did for now you know i also want an airsoft 320 but the 226 is doing the job pretty well for me. It's it's tickling my fancy. This, my friends, is the Resident Evil P virus. Yeah, P virus airsoft replica. And oh, this thing is so. I this used to be after the Glock was my main. I bought this, so this was my main for a while. But I try not to use it that much because it's like a collector item comes with the extended SIG mag and these this mag fits into that SIG and the, the mags I bought for that SIG also fit into this 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 SIG, the, the Resident Evil P-Virus. And it just is so clean. It was supposed to come when you buy this thing. It's advertised that it comes with a muzzle brake. That, that didn't come in my box and I'm still kind of upset because now I technically don't have the complete Resident Evil replica because part of the SIG is that that muzzle brake and I'm very sad about it. It is a slick gun and I am a sucker for stainless steel style slides with, you know, black pistol grips. I don't know what it is. It's just, oh, it just looks so clean and crispy. Yeah, there you go. Fucking slick. This is my favorite I do bring it out from time to time and use it, but I haven't been using it too much in recent times since I got the other SIG to work because, you know, just keep it pristine. It's a collector item. The story with this is one day I was like, let's do a wield. So I'm running around, I'm running around with the Glock and the SIG. I was running towards the objective and I was doing like a pew 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 side swipe and with my momentum of me running, I curved my Glock and I had the one arm out further than the other and I curved the Glock a little too far to the left and shot myself right in the hand with the airsoft gun. Um, it took a chunk of my thumb out. Not like like a chunk chunk but like there was there was a piece of like meat and skin hanging off my thumb from doing that. It, it did not feel good. I, and that was before I bought gloves for airsoft. Always wear gloves when you play airsoft. and. Getting shot in the hand sucks, especially when you're just, you know, <laughs> never do a wield in real life because you'll shoot your fucking hand off. Howdy, partner. Come to these parts often. One thing every airsofter to ha should have, because they're just fun, is an Elite Force hater. And for, for 90 bucks, oh, I love the way it sounds. For 90 bucks, it's a cool gun. It's got these little discs, you know, it's not really ergonomic for, for reloads in game which is why it's kind of like a target gun but i do plan on on busting out some 
some city slickers in my my western area, my western town, on the airsoft airsoft field. Cowboy. Reach for the sky. <laughs> I think I broke my back doing that. Not much to say about it. They're they're fun. They're they're a good deal. Uh, I got this one on Black Friday for like sixty bucks. It's got a Picatinny on top and bottom, so you can do tactical revolver stuff. And that's why I bought it was to make a hilarious tactical build. And I wanted to throw a tracer on it, uh, but the barrel doesn't have any threading inside or out. I mean, it kind of has like this like. Ooh yeah, I'll get one of those slide on. Uh, tracer units that slide on the picatinny and then I'll put a flashlight on the bottom and I'll put a scope and it'll be like a futuristic revolver was what I was going to go for because I wanted the tracer unit on it to build like a, a future like something out of cyberpunk. Do want to build it to be super sci-fi looking. The main event! Oh. Hi. How are you? What you doing in my waters? Just taking the air, you know. Not fishing. This bad boy is the dynamic tactical licensed warlord. It's not necessarily a DMR, but because it is a longer style gun, I, and I play in CQB, I built it out to be a DMR. We got the, the the grip bipod, which I just keep in bipod mode because it's it is so comfortable to hold. Fucking, it has key mods though, which suck. But all metal upper, polymer lower. Flat Dark Earth, I put my Valken stock on it because the stock that's on the Valken was originally on this gun. So I put the Valken stock on it and I have this cheap scope on it. This scope I bought off Wish for 50 bucks. This is the, the, the stupid uh, Pinty, you know, LPVO. I wanted to see if you could use this on a real rifle so I watched some videos on people using it on actual rifles and it doesn't hold zero so it's an airsoft scope. Uh, this goes from two and a half zoom all the way to ten. And it has a cool feature where the reticle lights up. You can see the glow of the scope. I also put on a little canted red dot sight. So since I'm in a CQB field, I use this for defensive game modes like bus domination, cemetery win. And if I ever need to move around the corner, you just switch to the canted red dot and I can put it on my shoulder and just be like pew 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 pew. I call it the rage quit and the reason I call it the rage quit is every time I've used this gun somebody fucking raged on me and it, it, it's hilarious. This is all you can see of me so if unless you can shoot me from x amount of feet away and hit me in the top of the dome you're not hitting me. <laughs> It's, it's not happening. I'm not getting hit. This is my unfortunately best functioning airsoft gun. There's no battery in it, but it shoots really fast and snappy. It works all the time. It's super reliable. The reason I call it the rage quit is because it makes people rage. One thing you need to know when playing airsoft, you're, you're here to play pretend and get shot with plastic BBs. It's not that serious. So, I'm doing my thing where I'm posted up prone watching the cemetery objective and I get this guy. I can literally see the enemy spawn from, from where I'm sitting. So I see a guy coming from the spawn because it's like, how am I going to lay this out with my hands? So we're looking at the, the field is essentially a square. Okay. Charlie spawn, alpha spawn. Charlie spawn, alpha spawn. Each corner of the square. So the people, the cemetery is like here-ish. So the people trying to capture the objective are coming from Alpha Spawn to the cemetery. People defending are coming from Charlie straight to the cemetery. So I'm watching the straight, the straight side, the straight sight line, right? So the entire game, people are coming from Alpha Spawn this way, you know, perpendicularly to get to the cemetery to capture it. So, you know, it's, it's, literally the whole spawn zone and there's parts on the map that are spray painted on the ground and you're not supposed to go past those parts because then you'd be in the enemy spawn so i'm shooting them from their spawn and they're walking you can't you know if you're far enough away which i am on the complete opposite side of the map the 32 
thousand square foot warehouse. I'm on the complete opposite side, sniping them with this rage quit rifle. And, you know, they're just coming from their spawn, running to the objective, you know, getting taken out. So I see a guy coming from the spawn, mind you, coming from the spawn. So I shoot him. I don't see an armband, so, and he's coming from the spawn. He's still in the enemy spawn zone. So I'm like, that is another player on another team. I hit him. He looks over. I'm like, dude's not calling his hit. So you do what every airsofter does in that situation and light them up. I am not an asshole. I never full auto somebody just because I'm mad they won't call their hit. I'll just shoot them again until they call their hit. So pew, 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 pew. Pew, 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 pew. I'm like laying prone, so I'm just like using my middle finger to spam as fast as possible, which is basically, you know. He's not calling his hit, and then he just looks at me, and he shouts, I'm on your team! And I'm like, buddy, pal, friend, airsoft geek, you're in the enemy spawn zone. You came from the enemy spawn. Thought you were on the other team. I, my bad, bro. So he makes his way all the way back to our spawn, the complete opposite side of the field, right? This is where he's, so he's like here-ish. He makes his way all the way back, walking slowly to where I'm at in our spawn, walks up to me and just comes up, because I'm laying prone, comes up behind me and just goes, shoots me in the fucking ass as I'm laying prone and I like looked at him I'm like dude and he's screaming he is livid he is screaming are you stupid are you fucking stupid are you re are you re the R word are you re, re re are you acoustic he's screaming at me obscenities and I literally just turned and I looked at him while I'm prone I'm like I'm like dude you were in the enemy spawn. You came from the enemy spawn area. I thought you were an enemy. My bad. He's like, You're so stupid. I, this is why I can't play this game because of people like you. Blah, blah, blah. And I just looked at him. I, I stood up from my prone. I, I looked at him. I'm like, It's just a game. It, it's just a game. You're a full-grown adult that came here to get shot with plastic BBs. God forbid you got shot with plastic BBs. Like, it's not that serious guy. And he was like, uh, yeah, whatever. Then he just turned around, walked back, and did whatever the fuck he was doing. I don't know, picking at his own butthole the entire time. Game ends. I go out there, and I see him packing up. He's packing up, and he leaves. And I'm just like, dude, the rage quit, man. The rage quit. Listen to the rage quit. That's was the story that gave it its name. Oh, my God. So, yeah, that's the story of the rage quit and it's a it's a slick gun i just love looking at it i would like to use it as an outdoor rifle so i could get rid of this goofy ass scope on top and put this on an actual airsoft sniper because on an outdoor field this thing would perform exceptionally well it's just so it's big big long and that's gonna do it for this uh 2024 airsoft collection showcase i hope you guys enjoyed it it's a i know it's a long one but i just wanted to show off the guns i have so far and talk about them i don't have anything too expensive as you saw in the video and I don't plan on getting a $400 airsoft gun until I build a collection of two to three hundred dollar airsoft replicas of guns I want like the M14, the UMP, the F2000. As the collection grows next year in 2025 I might do this around January I might wait till a little bit after maybe I'll just wait I'll do one every March. Yeah uh, like and subscribe if you enjoyed the collection review and I'll see you guys next time.